What's up, everyone? How you doing? Yes, we got a new intro from Ripple River. Make sure you go over to YouTube and check them out. Good stuff, man. Thanks for uh, the intro. You guys' is, uh, stuff kicks butt. Also, wanted to put out there, looking for a song, okay? Specifically written for Insane Throttle Biker News. Of course, you guys know I like hard rock. And it has to have Insane Throttle Biker News in there and James Hollywood Machikari somewhere in the song. Now, I'll pay you a hundred bucks through PayPal, of course, bring you on the show, interview your band, and our new radio station, I'll make sure that all your music's played over there. So, yes, looking for that. Now, I got a question. I really do. I got a question here. All you spammers out there, what is it about you people? I like how to spend like 15, 20 minutes a day going through all this spam stuff. It's getting tiring. So, I automatically freaking check the box. Automatically delete so I don't even have to look at it anymore. I, it really, man, with all this, man, you need uh, date this, date that. Come on. If people that are listening to my show are that hard up, something's wrong. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, also, we yeah, we're going to have news from all over the world again. Uh, our first story is out of Australia. Then uh, the update on the uh, Hells Angels Mongols uh, deal out in Lafayette. I guess there was charges filed. And yes, Leo, I get it. I get it, you're upset about the wall of shame, but you don't have to send articles in. I don't want to take them from you guys. I can get them off the wire or one of my subscribers. And yes, I know about uh, that trafficking stuff in Sturges. I'm actually covering it today. I don't care if you're a cop. I don't care if you're a biker. I don't care if you're a club member. If you get in with kids stuff like that, I have no love for you and I'm going to call you out. I'm going to call you out. So, you don't have to send me that crap. It gets boring. See, see, see. Okay, so you found one incident of bikers involved in that stuff. Where I do stories on your guys' every day that are doing it. So, don't try to make a right. Come on. Really? You know what? You guys are desperate. Desperate. Yes, if the audience couldn't tell, I have the Leo haters out there. And boy, Corey Graff's wall of shame really burns their balls. <laughs> Speaking of Corey, Corey is going to be doing a show on uh, the Motorcycle Madhouse radio that we're launching, Hard Rock, all that good stuff. Uh, I listened to a couple of his demos today. Man, it's going to be a good show. You know, we're not only going to be doing a lot of biker stuff over there, but we're also going to be covering sports, uh, the whole nine yards, and he is right on this stuff. I'm talking, this is going to be a regular radio type of station, guys. Uh, it's going to be easy. All you have to do is download an app on your phone and plug it into your car, plug it into your bike. Or you just listen on your phone at night when you're, you know, getting some, uh, you know, honey or something like that. Maybe old Hollywood can help you, your honey, get a little more excited. Uh, so just put on the radio station. Hollywood will be there for you. Hey, you guys got my back all the time. I'll get yours. So if you need a little help, don't get the Viagra pill. Just play Hollywood, man. We'll get him. We'll get. We'll work this thing out, man. <laughs> So, yeah, that's going to be going on. Uh, another thing that is bugging me. Harley Davidson, you know I'm on your ass all the time. And that story we did about the 750 uh, Street Fighter. Now, I was looking at the damn bike. It was kind of similar to the V-Rod. Not exactly, but, you know, in modern times. But you're deciding to shelve it. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? That kind of bike will appeal to the younger generation. And I don't think it's a 750, my fault. Uh, I know they're getting rid of the 752. They want to anyway. They closed down the India branch. Okay, so I kind of got them mixed up. My fault. I'll call myself out on that. But anyway, the Bronx Street Fighter, it looks like something the younger crowd would want to get into. 
So my question is, why get rid of it? You guys already know that the big bike market is not what the millennials are after. You know, actually, and this is, you know, serious stuff. It's not the cruisers or the highway models or any of that stuff that are making the sales right now. It's the off-road motorcycles. Why haven't you put out the Pan Am yet? Are you crazy? I think sales were up like 20 or 30% on them bikes. Honda's got its own out. BMW's got stuff out. Where is Harley Davidson? Why are you always trailing people? And I know the V twin is, you know, the heart of a Harley Davidson. It really is. You know, I'm not saying it ain't. But you guys need a rocket. I'm talking a rocket. That's what's going to get you, you know, back into the door with the younger ones. Not only the off market or the off road, but a rocket. But a lot of guys ain't gonna, you know, these kids, they don't want to have a V-twin on their rocket. You have to make something like the Busa or the freaking uh, Katanas. I'm telling you, that's going to be, you know, those two makes and models of bikes is what's going to get you back going. Yes, I always talk about sticking with the core customer. But let's be serious. We're all getting older now. And the bikes that the younger kids ride, the Rockets, and I, you know, you know what? I am jealous of some of these kids because they can ride, baby. They know how to ride. You got to give them that. They might be brats, but them kids know how to fucking ride a motorcycle. But anyway, those two models are huge right now, and I just don't understand what Harley is doing. You know, I looked over this rewire plan. It's not good. Who, who thinks this stupid crap? If you really want the company to go somewhere, you got to look at your trends. Now, a lot of people will say COVID-19, that's what destroyed... It, it didn't, guys. Actually, sales are up with the other brands because people wanted to just get out. And what better way to do that than a motorcycle? So, it, don't, you know, you look at Harley sales, you look at their product, and you can see why. I know they want to get rid of models and all that type of stuff, but they're getting rid of the wrong ones. <laughs> The wrong ones are getting rid of, you know, and then they're taking so damn long on the Pan American, which could be selling like hotcakes right now. But do you guys think that with some of these newer models that they're trying to get the younger generation to buy, do you think they need a new engine to design for those specific bikes? Now, I get the road bikes, I get... The glides, the freaking soft tails. I get that with the V-Twin. But what I'm saying is, and what I'm asking you, do they need a new style engine? And do they need a rocket? I think they do. Now, a lot of uh, you know people out there that are diehard Harleys, no, hell no, no way. What are you kidding me, Hollywood? Actually, I'm not. Because their problem right now is, damn, I'm near as shit. I'm almost 50 years old. My generation, Generation X. 20, 30 years, we're going to be aging out? They need to start concentrating on that younger group and what they like. Everything's changed, and I get it within the biker scene. God, do I get it. You know, Doing this show, I have actually learned how bad it really got. You know, the political correctness, uh, the snowflake syndrome, as I call it, within the scene. It's like, man, you know what? I get it. I never thought that it would get this way within the biker scene. But it has. I guess you can call it evolution. I call it disgusting, but evolution's a good word for it. So Harley-Davidson's going to have to freaking evolve. 
And to do that, you go after the trends, and I believe off-road and a rocket will do this freaking company some good. Now, will they listen? Probably hell no, they won't. They haven't listened to the customers uh, for a long freaking time. It's all gotten corporate. And that's what's sad about the Harley-Davidson so story. Every time it gets in the hands of investors, it goes down the poop chute. Yeah, it had some great uh, times from the mid-90s to, uh, what is it, 2014 when their sales started to go down. So if that starts happening, you go a different direction. They've tried, and you know what, I bump on that CEO that was just left, but at least he had the vision to say, hey, we need some new models in this freaking lineup. Because what was it? Before it was the same old stuff year after year, just a little change here and a change there, and they made their money. Harley right now is still trailing in technology compared to the other bikes. It's time to get some engineers in there that know what the hell they are doing. Really, guys, come on. Anyway. We're going to go on Biker News right now. That was my opening. What do you guys think? Don't forget. Pound rock on. And if you're over on YouTube, Facebook, make sure you like the video and share it on your social media, man. Get the word out there. Let's go to the news. Okay, here we go out of Perth now. I had to make sure because yesterday's segment over on YouTube and Facebook, I forgot to show the screen where uh, they can actually go along with the article with me. And it's like, damn, man, I think that Wisconsin thing really had me upset, and I didn't even, I wasn't even paying attention. But you guys get what the, the radio show is if uh, you get over on Spotify and iTunes with that. That's how I do the show. So let's get into Perth now. Uh, Nomads outlaw motorcycle gang president arrested over firearms and criminal group charges. Ah, there's those criminal group charges. I bet you guys can understand what that is. Aaron Lyons. Ten people have been arrested, including the national president of the Nomads bikey gang after a major strike force investigation you know i think i've asked this before of australia why do you call them bikies you know i know there's you know different ways of doing stuff i get it you want to be a little freaking unique i get it but why you call them bikies and then some of the way you guys spell things, you know, this is mostly English though, or Canadian, you know, you guys spell words that we got way different. You know, one thing I am jealous about with you guys, you use the metric system and the United States is the only dummies that don't, you know, have that, you know, the popular one. And I can't freaking convert nothing when I'm hearing about meters and all that stuff. It's like, man, I got to do freaking multiplication. That ain't cool, man. You know, you can watch some of this stuff on YouTube where, you know, I, I like science stuff. I like the astronomy stuff. I like ancient history. And it's like, well, it's about 90 meters that way. I'm saying, well, how many feet is that? Or you're watching one of them freaking uh, sea things where they're going out because I like that too. You know, in the, the ocean, well, it's about 200 meters deep. It's like, man, can you like translate that stuff for us dumb Americans? My God. Uh, a special strike force investigation was launched nine months ago after several public place shootings, assaults, and criminal activities. As a result of the investigation, ten people have been arre uh, have been arrested. See, it says have been arrested. You know, we would have said have been arrested and face forty nine charges. That's how we would have said it. But hey. I get it. You do your thing your way. Uh, in April, uh, officers in the ACT and NSW joined forces to investigate links between alleged offenses and ongoing criminal activity in Canberra. On Wednesday, police arrested the national president of the Nomads Outlaw Motorcycle Gang. And again, I'm reading from the article. I'm not freaking calling him a gang. You get it. At Karen in ACT. He was taken to the Act Watch House. 
I'm taking it. That's jail. Uh, police then raided two homes in Canberra, suburbs of Kingston and Kamba, where investigators seized two motor vehicles, a firearm, cash, prohibited drugs, jewelry, and various OMCG paraphernalia, including patches. The Nomad's bikey will appear at the ACT Magistrates Court on Thursday. You know, one thing I got to admit about Australia, got to admit it. You have some hot freaking women over there. Oh, my God. You know, it's funny. Uh, you, you can, See, bikies love Instagram. You know, don't tell me I don't know. You know, their feeds even make their newspapers. And, my God, are the women something? Ooh. Mm -hmm. I told you. You're having friggin', you know, trying to get it up with your honey. You can't do it. Just talk to Hollywood again. Don't don't use blue pills, man. Don't do it. You know, you have to have some freaking, you know, kind of freaking pride, okay? Don't let your pride be broken by a pill, is what I say. <sighs> what am I saying? I'll probably jinx myself, and at 80 years old, I'm going to need one. Uh, you remember that time you said don't use it? Yeah, I'm going to get it back. <laughs> freaking karma's a bitch. Uh, the Nomad's Bikey will appear at ACT Magistrate's Court on Thursday where NSW police force detectives will apply for his extradition to face charges related to firearms and directing a criminal group. Mm. Police allege the 34-year-old supplied firearms that were used in three public place shootings. Now, again, you know, over on the radio, I'm going to be talking about uh, some pictures, you know, that are up that you can't see, of course, because you're on the radio. But, hey, we love you on the radio. Everybody working right now, you stay strong. Uh, there's a picture of a BMW, uh, a Mercedes. Whew. Uh, AFP Detective Superintendent Scott Muller said he is expecting more charges uh, to be laid uh, with the arrest of the, this Nomad's national president. The influence of this club within Canberra is now extremely limited. Well, that's what you guys think. Uh, it's funny. They always think that if they take an officer down, that the club's going to go to crap. That's just not the case. That's what, you know, the structure's about, the bylaws are about. Somebody else just steps in there. So to think that taking out a national president's going to ruin the club, you're, you're just fooling yourself. Uh, quote, if you wish to jeopardize, say, say, that's the way they spell it. I'm telling you. The safety and community through criminal activity in NSW is only a matter of time before we find you. No matter where you choose to hide. Ooh, sounds like a threat to me. Now, let's go to the Phoenix Reporter and item. This is the first time that I've seen this paper, actually. Uh, Coltsville man arrested for illegal guns selling cocaine from his home. Oh, one thing I don't get. I don't get. I really don't. Is if you're doing some under table stuff, you're running the hustle, keep it away from your home. That's the first place they go. Keep it away. Fran May. A Coatesville man was arrested for illegal guns and drug trafficking after police received numerous tips. Oh, I'd be upset. Oh, I'd be upset. I'm looking at the pictures now. Uh, Thunder Guards MC. Essington, Pennsylvania. I'm talking, look at the cash there, baby. Uh, you know, some good fire. It looks like that me, uh, middle one is a 38 snub nose, if I'm not mistaken. It's in pink, so it must be a woman's. Uh, all kinds of pills and all kinds of that stuff. Uh, man, I would be pissed about that money. Uh, Kenneth Jerome Cole, 42, was. Tr that's why you put your money somewhere else. They can't get it. You know, that's just like growing up. I used to do a lot of number stuff. You always keep your receipts away from the money. Easy stuff. Keep it away from your house. Uh, he was charged with multiple counts of possession of controlled substance with intent to deliver. 
dealing in unlawful activities, receiving stolen property and persons not to possess firearms, he was remanded to uh, Chester County Prison. In the raid, police seized three illegal firearms. Here it is, $60,000 in cash. Oh, it makes my skin crawl. Cocaine, methamphetamine, various prescription pills, as well as drug packaging and manufacturing of paraphernalia. The case uh, against Cole began August 10th and continued until August 14th. When Cole, along with another known co-conspirator, sold cocaine to a confidential informant. See, that's what, you know, another thing. If you're going to get out there and sell, make sure you have buffers with you, man. Because the buffers are the ones that are going to get hit. You know, there's too many CIs out there now when it comes to that game. Too many. Uh, according to the Chester County District Attorney, on August 14th, the search warrant was executed at 24 West 5th Avenue. Law enforcement seized large quantities of cocaine, meth, marijuana, and various prescription pills. That, on top of the money they got, was 11.5 uh, street value. In addition, uh, uh, police seized the drug paraphernalia related to possessing controlled substance with the intent to manufacture and distribute. Uh, they got a Ruger 9mm and $5,300. Man, they're just racking up that dough. And I guarantee it's going to end up in some cop's pocket. Uh, Cole is not uh, p permitted to possess any firearm. Police also seized clothing and other paraphernalia in indicating membership to the Thunder Guard Motorcycle Club, an outlaw motorcycle gang based in Wilmington, uh, Delaware. A second uh, search warrant was executed on August 14, 2020 at 214 Andrew Road in Coatesville after new information was obtained by police in connection to the case. Uh, police seized additional quantities of cocaine and additional uh, drug paraphernalia, a Cobra Shadow 38, I told you, 38, a Colt Challenger 22, and uh, 48,000. Man, there was cash being flew all over the place, man. Uh, the Ruger uh, recovered from Cole's house had been stolen. Oh, that's a charge you do not want to get, a stolen firearm. We are, and this is a quote from a district attorney, we are all committed to safeguarding our community from the ravages of guns and drugs. We will not condone offenders who push this poison into our neighborhoods, and we have zero tolerance for the possession of firearms to help facilitate the drug trade. Well, my question is, is when is everybody going to understand that the drug war has failed? It's gone. It's done. You're just getting people hurt. Didn't you guys learn from Prohibition? My God. Our office will continue to work vigilantly along with law enforcement throughout this county to keep our streets safe. Uh, he was arrested uh, the 14th and arraigned uh, before Magisterial District Judge Marion Vito, who set his bail at $75,000 cash. You had that cash if you hid it away. Uh, he was also arrested on the 16th uh, for the charge of receiving stolen property for the Ruger 9 mil. Uh, he set bail at uh, $250,000 unsecured. Uh, bam! Got hit hard there, baby. Woo! Hopefully he gets a good attorney. Charges filed! This is out of the Journal Carrier, and the story we've uh, covered uh, since it uh, happened. Uh, charges filed against two men accused in Saturday's fatal fight between motorcycle gangs in Lafayette by Ron Wilkins. Let's see what we got here. Oh, man, what happened here? Let's see. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Lafayette Journal and Carrier. Jason Lee Hathaway started the fight outside a big league sports bar late Saturday that ended with Nicholas Lusson's death, according to prosecutors. As a large group of bikers arrived at the bar, bouncer Brandon Osborne was standing outside the sports bar at 140 Frontage Road with Brandon Wilcox 
and Colton Mitchell about 10:20 Saturday. Osborne turned around when he heard someone yell, and that's when Hathaway punched Osborne with brass knuckles. Man, those hurt with those brass knuckles. And hit him in the head with a tire iron, prosecutor said in a probable cause affidavit filed Wednesday with charges, Hathaway hit Osborne several more times. On Wednesday, prosecutors charged Hathaway, 43, of Michigan City with battery with a deadly weapon and filed that they intend to charge Hathaway with a sentence-enhancing charge of criminal gang activity. Ooh, that one's a hard one. Uh, the criminal gang activity allegation is that Hathaway is a member of a gang who acted at the direction of the gang. See, I, you know what? I can't, I, I can't approve of that one. He didn't act at a di di direction of a gang. This was a, a separate incident. That ha or to further the interest of the gang, according to the charge and the information, Lafayette police said the fight was between ro uh, rival motorcycle gangs, the Hells Angels and Mo uh, Mongols. After the initial attack, Osborne told police he saw people pointing guns at him during the melee. Lutzen hit Mitchell in the head with a metal object, and Mitchell stabbed Lawson in the chest with a, a knife. Lawson died in the parking lot, with the two motorcycle gangs gathering in the bar's parking lot in the strip mall just west of the Cracker Barrel and north of Indiana 26. Lafayette police had every patrol officer on duty during and in the parking lot and later dispatched the SWAT. Tippica New and Tyler Two. I got that. You guys answered that question, man. Uh, had five or, uh, of its six on duties. Uh, West Lafayette police responded to the calls. So if you guys don't know the story, that's the story. Go listen to us on the other segments. It's kind of just repeating stuff, if you ask me. Uh, then we're going to, uh, well, here's the first one. For about 80 years, the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally in South Dakota has been wildly popular. Oh, we're really excited. This is our 18th year coming. Yeah. Number 18 for us. Yeah. We don't miss it. We come every year. About 500,000 people showed up last year. Despite fears that it will be a super spreader for coronavirus this year, some 250,000 are expected to pack the small town of Sturgis when the rally gets underway this weekend. You cannot stop people from coming. Oh. Uh, South Dakota's been a free state through this whole... They repeat every damn thing in their videos. They need to get new videos, Chris. People who went to Sturgis will want to look back at what they did one week ago. Someone who spent the afternoon on Tuesday, August 11th at One-Eyed Jack Saloon. Again, that's One-Eyed Jack Saloon has tested positive for COVID-19. State officials say the person was at the bar. If you were there from noon until 5.30, make sure you guys get tested. Uh, you're going to want to monitor yourself for sy symptoms because it usually takes two weeks. Now here's the one story that, you know, they had a friggin' send me. Eight arrested in sex trafficking investigation at Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. Oh, boy. Uh... This is the one that they uh, got their heart on about. An investigation into sex trafficking at the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally has resulted in the arrest of eight men. U.S. Attorney Ron Parsons have announced that two of the men had been arrested on charges of attempting criminal sex uh, trafficking of a minor, you sick bastards. Uh, six others were arrested for attempting to entice a minor using the internet. The investigation was conducted by both federal and South Dakota law enforcement officers and operated for the entire duration of the 10-day rally. The event drew an estimated, and here we're getting the numbers, 460,000 people. The suspects arrested include, and I'm going to read your names, you cocks. You make us look bad. You get Leo sending me this stuff. What's wrong with you people? You sick bastards, I hope you get it in jail. Robert Lee Goodwall Jr., 20, of Rapid City. Cody Wayne Hopkins, 29, Montgomery, Pennsylvania. Michael Ray Hudson, 32. Travis John McDonald's, 28. William Nicholas Riley, 60. You should know better. K. 
Kevin William Clements, 22. Darren Wilbur Harrison, 25. Christopher Covey Dale Trooks, 33. I'll have more of this in my final thoughts. Uh, Corey Graff's Wallace Shame, Somerville police officer fired following arrest for DUI in Berkeley County. A Somerville police officer has been fired. Troopers with the highway control said Cameron Pippin, you ain't Pippin anymore, was charged in the incident. Uh, it happened on August uh, 12th when troopers responded to a car versus an object. Yes, we got us a drunk. <laughs> we got us a good drunk. Let's go to my... This is Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Welcome back, guys, to the show! Okay. Let me make this perfectly clear. I had a talk about this thing going on in uh, South Dakota. Had to. I'm, I'm going to get medieval I think on your I'm gonna. asses. I think I'm going to. You know what? You're an embarrassment. An embarrassment to the scene. Now, if you're all bikers that got busted up in this stuff, I think you deserve whatever you get. When it comes to these type of crimes, everybody knows. Not cool. Not cool at all. You're making us look stupid. Really stupid. You are putting us in the category of what these cops want to put us in. Rape and pillage. That's what they want to push to the general public. And stories like that plays right into their hands. Nobody's perfect. I get it in the biker scene. Yeah, we got guys making their money, doing their thing. But that's always been a part of the lifestyle. There's always been certain people that are going to do what they're going to do to hustle and make their money. Yeah, you, you should be a little more smarter about it. You know, keep the, the crap out of your backyard. That's always been one of the number one rules. And with that kind of cash that got seized out there, oh man. You know, I've been covering a lot of stories where the, the cash has been seized. I don't get it, man. You got to have, you know, a safe house or something where, you know, you do your business there. Uh, you know, stay away, put some security freaking uh, measures in place where if a CI gets in your organization or something, they don't know about it don't know about it and another security thing that i know we used to do in the neighborhood was uh on some of the guys you made sure that you had an outer circle nobody knew about and they had to always be doing the checking and all that good stuff it was like having a private pi in your organization to make sure hey this dude is ci or is this dude uh skimming off the top that kind of stuff so you have to put some kind of safety measures in place. But going back to these uh, idiots out in South Dakota, it's bad enough with the profiling and it's bad enough. Uh, I don't know if they were in clubs or not, but it's bad enough that clubs are freaking rocked with profiling all the time. I have to argue that the police in the United States are getting aggressive like they are in Australia. You know, they're not over the top like Australia is with their strike force this and their strike force that. But they're really starting to really get down with motorcycle clubs. And I hope to uh, God that none of these that were arrested during this sex sting we're members of motorcycle clubs because then it just makes it look even worse. Look at the one article that we just did. Uh, the Hells Angels Mongol thing and not Lafayette. They charged one guy with gang enhancement, you know, acting on behalf of the club or for the benefit of the club. That's the same, you know, now they're going to get tagged because of those charges. 
In Indiana, you don't want to mess around in Indiana, man, with the charges and stuff. You'll hit up Michigan City, and it's not a fun place up in Michigan City. Boy, them walls suck. I have a couple guys uh, doing life uh, over there that I'm real friends with uh, from the neighborhood. And it's like, damn, dude, this one sucks, this person, man. It's just as worse as frickin' Menard or uh, Stateville. Nah, well, Pontiac's up there, too. But regardless... It's not, you don't want to screw around in Indiana, but they're going to put that kind of stuff towards these guys in South Dakota. If they did, it's not going to be a good damn thing. It's already bad enough they got busted for this crap. Uh, but again, I don't know if they're in motorcycle clubs. They didn't let, you know, they didn't say it. Yes or no. Uh, some of them are locals now. I got to bring that up. See, the problem is with the article, they don't distinguish if they were bikers or not. You know, a few of them, you know, they had to be because they were from different states. But there was some locally. And also, I do want to address uh, the South Dakota thing with, uh, I'm just calling them the left-wing group. Y'all guys know what I'm talking about. A lot of people are coming out and saying, well, they were locals. They weren't a part of that. When you're waving their flag, I don't care where you live or what the cops say, you're a part of it. They were waving that flag. And everybody knows what flag I'm talking about. So, you know, I know some uh, people, I know BD even came out and say he might have got it wrong. I don't believe you did, BD. If they're carrying the flag, they are what they are, man. I don't, you know, again, I don't care if they're from freaking South Dakota. But uh, that one news story really, you know, made, put bikers in a freaking bad light, man. Uh, I can't stand them. And I know a lot of other people can't stand when you mess with kids. And I don't care if it's a Leo. I don't care if it's a biker. You're just a low-life piece of crap, man. You know, you're really hard up if you got to do that type of stuff, man. You really are. You're hard up. You know, I get it. You know, if you got to pay for it, you got to pay for it. But at least make sure they're 18, man. Have some freaking morals. Have some self-respect. But no, now what's going to happen is your ass is going to go to the clink because the feds were involved and they don't play around with that kind of stuff. And when you get to prison, they'll ask you for your papers and they're going to see what you're in for and you're going to have hell on earth and god bless it for that man i think if you do something like that it should be hell on earth i think that you're gonna get some makeup put on you and you're gonna get pimped out uh in the joint just like uh how you tried to take advantage of a minor child uh in the same uh capacity you deserve everything you get I hope it's going to be miserable for you. And you know what? It's them type of guys that usually go in the joint. They're crying like hell, man. They just cry the first day. And, you know, by the next day, you know, they see the weakness or they see the charge. And, you know, you're turning tricks. And so be it. But I just hate that it happened uh, in South Dakota because it really and uh, you know what i don't there was a lot of arrests for a lot of stuff there and there usually is there's what four hundred sixty thousand people that showed that that thing so there's going to be them type of things but this one is just yeah mm -hmm. yeah you deserve what you get you sick freaks you know what is it with these people that they have to go after these kids is it a power trip? What is it? Or, you know, is it because you can't get it anywhere else from somebody your own age? You have to go after freaking, you know, what is it, man? You, you know, kids are pure of heart. Why do these people have to take away that from them? You don't take away freaking innocence. It's bad enough when you get older. Life sucks. And they got to learn that stuff. But to take away their innocence uh, at a young age, you're just freaking worthless human beings. I don't think you should uh, exist on this planet because you're not good for anybody. Not good for anybody. You're just, when it comes down to it, sick. And I don't mean in, uh, you know, where I have to get some counseling or therapy. Now, those are one of those deals when you get castrated, man, and tortured uh, for the rest of your life because the innocence that you did take away from that child. 
I think, and people might be thinking I'm harsh, but I think that is the perfect, perfect punishment. Hell on earth. Because you know what? The memories those kids are going to have the rest of their life for what you guys did to them is unacceptable. Biker or Leo or regular people on the street that do it. You know, it's funny. My boy, he's uh, doing time in a max right now. People who followed the show know why. And, you know, I talk to him on a daily basis. And I, I asked him, I was like, man, what's the Como population in there? He says, man, they're all over the place, but they keep them in a different building uh, because they're worried about people running up on them. Well, of course, in a max, man. <laughs> it's a lot different than a medium and uh, minimum security. But he says it's, it's ridiculous. There's a lot of people in there now. And maybe because of the internet, we've heard about this more and more. In the old days, you would have to wait for something like this to pop off on the news. Now it's like, damn, man, you uh, hit the internet, hit some news sites, and next thing you know, you're seeing this, you're seeing that, and you're thinking, what a sick world we live in. It's a sick world. And I know it's never going to stop. It's always going to be there because it's human. Uh, you know, you got sick, uh, you know, <laughs> sick human beings out there. Their genetics are all screwed up. And it's one of them types where you wish they were never born because they cause more harm than good. Uh, what's funny is with a lot of these people, and I hate it too, because uh, I believe in my old man upstairs, boy. I believe in him, Jesus Christ, every damn thing. And I know you're supposed to forgive and forget. I just can't do that with these people, man. I really can't. And what I hate is... They go into the joint and all of a sudden they're born again. Well, why weren't you born again on the street before you did this kind of stuff? You're trying to get a jail out of free card for what you did. You didn't man up. Of course, I can't even call you a man because uh, a real man don't go and do this kind of crap. All I know is it makes a lot of us look bad. But one good thing about bikers is they do not allow this kind of crap. They will freak you up around a kid. That's why I'm glad that we have organizations like BACA. And remember, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Uh, but we have BACA that takes care of the kids. And we did that one uh, organization. I think it was called BASHGA. And they take care of uh, sexual uh, victims. Uh, and all that good stuff. So bikers have a lot of things that they do to try to prevent that type of stuff. Great clubs out there. Great organizations. Uh, but, you know, sexual uh, exploitation of a kid. You're worth as freaking uh, human beings. I can't even call you human beings at that part. Uh, you know, it's funny. I was always told animals don't even treat their... Uh, own breed like we do us you know they don't treat their own kind like human beings turn on each other you know and that they don't treat i don't know i'm trying to say uh even uh animals have more morals than some of these human beings on earth they really do uh it's just sickening uh, regarding some of the stories uh, over in Australia, just because you took a national president down, like I said earlier, doesn't mean that the all the organization's gone and over with. That is a fantasy. Fantasy. And I never got, and maybe somebody can explain this, why in the hell are you, they going after colors over there? Now, I've seen some of the stuff these bikies can do, man. You know, they're real deal, real, real gangster stuff. They got the cars, they got the money. They're doing the crap right over there. But if you take their patches, you're not going to know who the hell is who. Yeah, you might have an updated list right now because they're in patches. But what happens when, you know, they get people coming in that you don't... 
don't know. You don't know if they're associates. You don't know if they're members. So I really don't get that kind of stuff over in uh, Australia. That's why I didn't get the thing that they were trying to do with the Mongols here with the feds. Because it's like, really? You want to take away the patches and not know who the hell the people are? That's one thing that always got me going with motorcycle clubs. Okay, you're out there making your money. And you're you're a known club member because you got a patch on. It's like advertising, you know. It's like my God. And I think that's why I get upset when uh, club guys go out there is because they're representing their club, and next thing you know, their actions causes everybody else freaking problems. That's insane, man. And then it's like, okay, clubs are not gangs. But if you're going to go out there and play that game, you know, how can you, you know, turn down the heat for one of your guys is getting busted? Because you know what? Most of the time, it's only at a chapter level. It's never an organized type of deal. Uh, it, again, it's local. So, you know, that is my uh, thoughts. Again, uh, thanks for uh, Ripple River for making the new intro song. Don't forget to listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all the majors, man. Google uh, Play Music. Again, working hard on the radio station, man. I did not know how much goes into this type of stuff. Sweepers, licensing fees, getting shows going. Uh, A lot of hard stuff, man. So hopefully you guys are going to like it, listen to it. Uh, Doing it for you guys, giving you a non-censored platform and some damn good music at the same time. Uh, Pound rock on everybody Don't forget to share uh, On your social media Get over to Instagram man Because I do a lot of videos on Instagram That I don't put anywhere else man I don't put them on YouTube video, uh, uh, Facebook Twitter any of that stuff And yes Twitter is our Feed for HarleyLiberty.com So you don't have to go through And look at all the stories You just see them as they pop up over on the Twitter feed With that, I'll talk to you guys later, man. Have a good one. I said goodbye. Goodbye, baby. It was a good show. Thanks for listening. So you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now rock on don't forget to go over to harleyliberty.com get all your motorcycle club news what's happening in the scene we have a new article or articles every single day over at harleyliberty.com and don't forget the sister site bikerlifestylemagazine.com if you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at baggersyndicatecycles.com. The show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!